Ahead on NCBA's Cattlemen to Cattlemen. On this week's special edition of NCBA's Cattlemen to Cattlemen, tips for keeping cattle healthy with stories from Merck Animal Health. And now, a special edition of NCBA's Cattlemen to Cattlemen with host Kevin Oxner. Hello and welcome to this week's special edition of NCBA's Cattlemen to Cattlemen. I'm Kevin Oxner. Thanks for joining us. There are a lot of issues cattlemen across the country deal with on a daily basis, including internal parasites and pink eye. This week, we're looking at the stories from Merck Animal Health and learning how their line of products can help cattlemen prevent these issues before they ever even become a problem. Let's take a look. Welcome back. Success in producing and raising healthy, profitable beef cattle often hinges on the control of internal parasites, which can steal profits and negatively impact animal health. To learn how producers can fight this ever-present yet unseen threat, we caught up with Merck Animal Health to ask them about the optimum parasite control strategies for producers. When it comes to battling internal parasites, having the best product isn't enough. Timing your deworming treatment to combat the life cycle of the parasites on pasture is key. It's so important because parasites affect every aspect of the cattle production, okay? And they're in every production cycle, whether it's cow-calf, stalker, or feedlot. If we look at the three things that parasites do, they affect it, uh, decrease feed intake, decrease average daily gain, and alter the immune system. All three of those can affect, affect the productivity of that calf to the tune of about $190 over his lifetime. Experts say only 1 to 5 percent of parasites are actually in the cow herd. Most are in the form of eggs and larvae on the pasture. So cattlemen need to think strategically to reduce the parasite population and prevent losses. When we have a strategic deworming program, what we're trying to accomplish is a relatively parasite safe pasture year round. Okay? The benefits from that, are, they again come in the form of increased conception rates, increased weaning weights, decreased health problems. The way we do this is attack the worms when the pasture is growing at its best. When the pasture is at its best, the worms are at their best. And so if we deworm at strategic times, then we can have the most impact on our pastures and decrease the number of, of, of eggs and larvae on the pasture. Timing and method of application are just part of the deworming equation. What producers really need to know is if their product is working by checking the effectiveness of their dewormer. It behooves us all to check and see what we're doing is actually working. And several years ago, I worked with parasitologists to develop a standardized fecal egg count reduction test. And what that does is look at the efficacy of the deworming. So a producer can go out deworm his cattle, take some fecal samples. 14 days later, we take more fecal samples. And if we get a 90% reduction or better in that egg count, then we know he's had a successful deworming. If it's less than 90%, then we need to go back and look at some things. Did he use the product correctly? Was it dosed correctly? You know, if all those can be answered yes, then we need to look at, is there a resistance problem? All cattle can be a host of internal parasites. A whole herd deworming program shows benefits to both cows and calves. All animals, if you're in a cow-calf situation, should be dewormed. While the adult cow will develop some immunity to these parasites, she still sheds a tremendous number of eggs and is a huge source of infection for her calf. Parasites in the young animal are much more detrimental than they are in the older animal, so it's vitally important to get, keep those controlled in the young for their production. Brent Parkman, manager of Parkman Cattle Company south of Montgomery, Alabama, knows firsthand how important good parasite control can be. We've been in business for 35 years. My dad started the company uh, back in the 70s. We're a order buying background or operation. Uh, we cover most, uh, if not all, the markets in the southeast. We also are in the uh, stocker business. We turn out stocker cattle throughout the southeast and midwest uh, from peanut farmers in South Georgia to 
uh, wheat farmers in Oklahoma and Kansas. In the southeast, um, where we get uh, a tremendous amount of rainfall, our cattle come in mental deprived and loaded with parasites. We are looking to maximize cattle performance, um, reduction of fecal egg counts, and uh, just doing, doing all that we can do to help the animal perform in the environment that it's gonna be in, whether it's in the feed yard or whether it's on pasture. Parkman Cattle Company is a diversified, family-run operation where the emphasis is on family. It's a family environment. Uh, I work along my mother, my father, my brother, my nephews, my nieces, and my children are getting of the age now where they're, they're getting out here, and, and uh, it just makes me feel good to see an eight-year-old boy pinning 200 head of cattle. When it comes to selecting a deworming program, beef producers are looking for one thing. Weight gain, producers are selling pounds. We're using Safeguard to clean the cattle out, to uh, get them clean, in order to, for those cattle to maximize their efficiency on feed or grass uh, when they leave here. Timing of cattle deworming is important, but not always convenient. So Merck Animal Health offers several non-handling forms of dewormer to allow producers to deworm at the most optimal time for maximum benefit. Well, the neat thing about with Safeguard, they can actually deworm without having to handle the cattle. You know, research shows that it can cost up to five bucks a head to, de to handle those cattle. With Safeguard, with our non-handling forms, you don't actually have to gather the cattle. We have several feed-through products that are just as efficacious as the drench or the paste. Parkman Cattle Company has incorporated Safeguard non-handling forms of dewormer into various aspects of their operation. We use Safeguard mineral in, uh, on hard-to-reach cattle that we don't want to put our hands on and have to go through the stress and the weight loss on those cattle. We'll just uh, pull their mineral and uh, apply the Safeguard mineral to that. We use Safeguard range cubes to deworm our brood cows uh, during times of the year where we don't have to get up and, and put our hands on those cattle. When the grass is at its best, we want our cattle to be at their best. Uh, we want the cattle as clean as possible and using Safeguard non-handling forms such as mineral or range cubes in order to deworm those cattle will get those cattle at their level that they need to be to maximize their potential. Recently, Parkman Cattle Company has also started using Safeguard Drench and an injectable dewormer on incoming stocker calves. At initial processing, when we receive the cattle in, the cattle will be vaccinated and uh, fully processed. Uh, bulls will be castrated. Uh, deworming, we use, we use Safeguard Drench along with an injectable dewormer to, to get the cattle cleaned out. Cattle just perform better, they, they're cleaner. Uh, after day 30 coming out of the preconditioning pen, they're ready to go to work uh, as far as going on grass programs or, or into the feedlots. And there is good science behind using a combination deworming approach. Well, basically the science behind it is this. When you put an avermectin together with Safeguard, you're playing to the strengths of both products. Also, there's been some modeling done where we've looked at parasite resistance. And by using the combination, it would appear that we may be able to slow the development of resistance for several years. A good parasite control program provides the foundation to nearly all other health and production management practices. Dr. Newcomb sums up an optimal deworming approach. With internal parasites, we should make sure that the producers are deworming these animals at the most optimal time, employing strategic deworming. And then what they need to be doing is actually checking behind these wormings to make sure that they were efficacious. For Brent and his family, getting each animal to perform to their full potential is the ultimate goal. Since we've been using Safeguard, we've seen a uh, increase in feed intake, better performance, and, um, and that's maximizing our opportunities uh, in the livestock business because that's what we're about is, is selling pounds of beef.
In Montgomery, Alabama, I'm Brian Baxter reporting for NCBA's Cattlemen to Cattlemen. The recent USDA NOMS cow-calf survey found that less than 5% of beef producers check the effectiveness of their deworming program. Do you know if your deworming program is working? For more information about fecal egg count reduction tests, contact your veterinarian or your local Merck Animal Health representative. And as always, you can check us out at cattleman to cattleman Org. We'll be right back. They're out there, lurking on your pasture, just waiting to infect your cattle as they graze. Cattle worms cost you money, but a Safeguard strategic deworming program allows you to deworm your cattle and lower worm burdens on your pasture, resulting in improved pregnancy rates and heavier calf weights. Plus, there's a Safeguard form for every operation. So start killing parasites where they lurk. Talk to your animal health provider today about a Safeguard strategic dewormer program. Safeguard. Think strategically. Act decisively. You're not responsible for the weather, just the cattle. And Rangeland works as hard as you do to deliver performance, production, and profitability. Cattle need consistent nutrition. They'll get it year-round with Rangeland products from Lando Lakes. Deliver what they need free choice in weather-resistant loose minerals and mineral and protein tubs. Get the most out of your forage. See your Lando Lakes co-op for products that will stand up to whatever Mother Nature throws at us. Weather's coming in. Rangeland. Consider it done. Hi there, I'm Joey. And I'm Rory, and welcome to our farm outside Nashville, Tennessee. When we go to work, whether it's on tour or here at home, we wear the West. That's right. Where it's that perfect snap shirt or that perfect pair of boots. When you wear Roper, you wear the West. Learn more about us, Joey and Rory, and about Roper Western wear at eroper.com. Telling the truth and being real And feeding my family a home-cooked meal That's important to me That's important to me and Planting the garden and watching it grow Wanting to cut cost as well as hay? You don't have to look any further than your John Deere dealer. Pile up big bonus cash or special financing on our high-quality lineup of hay tools from mower conditioners to balers. Or if you have a utility tractor in mind, take advantage of some of the best deals ever on the rugged 5 Series and 6 Series. Make tracks for your John Deere dealer now and bag big savings. Welcome back. Pink eye is one of the most common assaults on the health of calves less than four months of age. Pink eye losses can exceed $100 per incidence in beef cattle. As pink eye season approaches, it's time for producers to take preventative steps to control this contagious and costly disease. Reporter Matt Fleck has more from Central Florida. Each year, pink eye losses cost the U.S. cattle industry 150 to $200 million. Pink eye is a disease every cattleman can recognize and every cattleman wants to avoid in their animals. Well, if we're looking at more oxella bovis, we look at pink eye, we can suffer a lot of economic losses from it. And one of the most easy ways people see this and manifest it is lost weight gain. And per animal that has pink eye, we can see lost production of 40 to 60 pounds per animal. Now the tough thing is a lot of people out there, they'll see pink eye and one of the things they'll see is damage to the eye. And when they see that eye damage, if they go to sell that animal, that can cost them upwards of $11.75 per hundredweight when they go to sell it. When we look at lost production to pink eye, you know, we know we got the average daily gain of 40 to 60 pounds per head per animal. The damage dies, what that all equates to is about $100 per head you can look at. And that's been documented in studies. Dr. Bennett Flanders says when the right environmental conditions come together with large numbers of flies, the rate of pink eye can be quite high. Our biggest challenge here recently, in the last year or two, has been pink eye. We've had, you know, I'm a veterinarian and I've been in practice for, was in practice for 35 or 40 years and I had the worst pink eye I've ever seen in my life right here. Pink eye in cattle starts with the trauma to the cornea of the eye caused by dust, pollen, ultraviolet light or flies. Once the cornea has been irritated, Moraxilla bovis, the primary bacteria cause of cattle pink eye, attaches to the eye. 
So when we think of Morox bovis organism, how it attaches to the eye, just take a look at your hand and think of your fingers as that organism and your hand. And when it comes down on the eye, it attaches on the surface of the eye with those fingers. So it'll attach there and you'll have multiple organisms like that attaching. And when those organisms attach, we get more irritation to the eye. We have the Morox bovis organism there and we start seeing the clinical signs of pink eye. Stewart says if left unchecked, pink eye can develop rapidly to a severe level that threatens the animal's eye. So if we're looking at an animal that has pink eye, we can go through some various stages, the infectious process. First thing you'll notice is an increase in the tearing of the eye. And you're going to notice that by some staining coming down the medial canthus or the corner of the eye on the inside. And it'll come down their face and you'll see a nice wet area. It might be a little dirty looking and things like that, but excessive tearing there. Then we'll get some redness in the eye, conjunctivitis with that, we'll see. Then that can just spread. We can start seeing maybe right around the cornea area a little bit of an ulceration, a little integrity break of the cornea there. It can get white, and then we can start seeing it spread. And people will worry, when they start seeing it like that, they worry about losing that eye, losing that. And then you can see scarring can be one of the end resolutions, that we have a scar in that eye. And as we said, that's when you know we don't want to lose the eye. Sometimes the scarring will heal up and they'll be fine. But as we talked with those purebred animals, if we get a permanent scar or a blue eye, as some folks will say, or a white eye, you've lost, you know, that value of that animal. While every cattleman can recognize the disease once it develops, what cattlemen really want to know is how to prevent pink eye. Dr. Stewart says preventing pink eye requires a three-pronged approach. When we're looking to prevent pink eye, we have to take an approach of a three-legged stool. And what we're looking at, each one of those legs is vital. Just like if you're sitting on a stool, you don't want one of them weak because the stool can collapse. So we think of a pink eye program, think of that three-legged stool. The first leg we look at is prevention. And when we're looking at prevention, we're talking about, let's use a broad-based, broad-spectrum vaccine that's going to give us protection against multiple strains of Morox bovis. Because that Morox bovis organism is the one we've got to prevent. Stewart says timing of a vaccination program is as important as the vaccine itself. Pink eye is hard to treat, so we really want to prevent the problem. And one of the first things we need to do is get those animals vaccinated. When we vaccinate them, we want to get them vaccinated three to six weeks prior to the onset of the pink eye season. As I tell folks, let's look out six weeks, because most of these products that we have, it's going to take a good six weeks, three to six weeks to build a good strong immune response to that vaccine. Unlike other vaccines, which produce circulating antibodies in the bloodstream, Stewart says pink eye vaccines produce antibodies that bathe the surface of the eye to fight the infection where it starts. When we look at our pink eye vaccine, we vaccinate that animal, like we said, three to six weeks before the onset of pink eye season. We build up a good immune response in that animal. How that animal's immune system combats the pink eye or, or the Morox bovis organism is, they shed tears, and they shed in those tears, we have antibodies in those tears, and they bathe and they coat the eye. And there are antibodies in those tears that combat that Morox bovis organism and keep it from attaching to the eye. And that's the key with that vaccine. If we've got those tears in the eyes with those antibodies, we combat that organism and we minimize economic damages due to pink eye. While vaccination with a broad spectrum vaccine is important, Stewart says fly control is equally critical in preventing pink eye. The second leg of that stool is fly control, and that's critical also because the flies are the ones that spread that Morox bovis organism. And uh, those face flies can go from animal to animal transmitting that bacteria. So we got to have good fly control, and that starts be it in a cow, be it in a calf, but every animal in the place. We want to use insecticide ear tags that are effective against face flies. You might as well get one that's got effect against horn flies because horn flies are also a problem. But we want to put one tag in each ear with these animals, so two tags per head. And we want to use a poron and uh, poron insecticide also at the same time we put the ear tags in. So a good way to think of it for the fly control is a tag and pour program. While both horn flies and face flies can cause pink eye, face flies can rapidly spread the disease from animal to animal in a herd. So we talk about that face fly, we know that it transmits that Morox bovis organism to one animal. And we've used that example today of how, you know, what happens, the progression of the disease. But keep in mind, that face fly can land on one animal, take that Morox bovis organism to another animal. And we see that in herds all the time. I mean, so, you know, flies, we got a lot of them out there. And that's why we want to control them, because they're the vector. They're the ones that spreads that organism from animal to animal. So they land around the face, around the eye. 
is their land and their transmitting that organism. If you got cattle that got fence line contact with the neighbor, you got herds on both sides or close to you, we can get face flies going from one herd to another. Dr. Stewart says the environment can also contribute to the incidence of pink eye. The other part of that three-legged stool is the environmental control. And when we're looking at that, what we're looking at is we got pastures that could be long, high, we want to clip them because we don't want grasses, weeds, etc., like that, scratching that cornea of the eye and setting up the animal for the infection. Because if we damage the integrity of the eye, that Moroxella bovis organism can really get in there and take effect when those flies land. Ultraviolet light, things like that, you know, it's, we can't put sunglasses on them, but we can sure create shades for them. Dust, things like that, pollen, realize that can activate it. So when we look at pink eye, we look at that three-prong approach. We want to have a good vaccine. It's going to get us good broad-based protection. We want to have good fly control, so we want to use a tag and pour. And we want to have good environmental control to control pollens, dust, high grasses, things like that. Dr. Stewart sums up the three-pronged approach of a complete pink eye prevention protocol. So if I'm looking and I have somebody contact me and they say, what's a good pink eye program? The first thing I'm going to tell them is we got to vaccinate. So get that good broad spectrum vaccine into that animal three to six weeks before the onset of pink eye. Tag and pour. I want insecticide ear tags that are effective against face flies. I want a good long acting pour on insecticide on the animal. And I want to be aware of the environmental control. Clip the pastures. Keep in mind if you might have to put up shades, things like that. But keep in mind the impact the environment can have. That should minimize any losses due to pink eye. For Dr. Flanders, a pink eye prevention program involving vaccination, tag and poor fly control, and environmental management is producing positive results. But we seem to be getting ahead of it now. Reporting from Lakeland, Florida, I'm Matt Fleck for NCBA's Cattlemen to Cattlemen. For more information about preventing pink eye, please visit StopCattlePinkEye.com or CattlemanToCattlemen.org. And we'll be right back. Preventing cattle pink eye is as easy as one, two, three. One, vaccinate your animals with Pilligard Pink Eye Triview to provide pink eye fighting antibodies in the tears that bathe the eye. Broad spectrum protection that cross reacts with 103 different strains of pink eye causing bacteria. Two, stop the flies that spread pink eye bacteria throughout the herd. Apply double barrel VP ear tags and Ultra Boss Pour On for up to five months of face fly and horn fly control. Three, manage the environment to reduce damage to the animal's eye from seed heads, pollen, and UV light, irritants that increase the risk of pink eye infection. With the right tools, preventing pink eye is as easy as one, two, three. Dust off those boots and come join us in Tampa, Florida for the 2013 Boots on the Bay Cattle Industry Annual Convention and NCBA Trade Show. This is your chance to network with industry leaders, participate in important cattle industry meetings, and learn about the newest technologies available. See what all the buzz is about at the Cattle Industry Annual Convention and NCBA Trade Show in Tampa, Florida, February 6th through the 9th. For more information, visit BeefUSA.org. Assuring beef quality begins with dedicated people such as Phoebe Bittler, a dairy producer, and Jim Warren, a cattle auction market owner. Both are winners of the Beef Checkoff funded National Beef Quality Assurance Award and both recognize the need for the entire industry to focus on beef quality. We've tried to put our best foot forward and try to see that um, the product that we send out of this country is the most wholesome, safest, best product that anybody could have anywhere and to be um, complimented for that effort is a, an amazing experience. It's all important and I think there's some really good protocols laid out in the uh, Beef Quality Assurance Program that will help producers to do the best job that they can do. Producers across the nation have embraced the BQA program because they're committed to producing the world's best beef. To find out how you can compete for the BQA National Awards, visit the website bqa.org. Welcome back. Respiratory disease in cattle is one of the most significant health-related issues the industry faces. In fact, it costs producers an average $15 per calf per year. 
Cattleman to Cattleman reporter Brian Baxter had a chance to visit the Linskoff Thiel Ranch in South Dakota to learn more about this progressive operation, its heritage, and how they protect cattle from respiratory illness. Uh, Les and I have been in the uh, seed stock business for 30 years. Started out with Charley cattle and uh, have added Angus about 10, 12, 15 years ago. So we sell both breeds and uh, pretty much a local regional market. Uh, we sell on the two, the Cheyenne and the Standing Rock Indian Reservation are two of our main areas along with probably 50, 80 miles either side of that. And we also sell a few herd bulls. I'm very fortunate. My wife, Nancy, will be married 25 years next year, and uh, she's a big part of the operation. She does nearly all the office work, keeps me organized, keeps all the records going in and out of the associations, and handles semen accounts and payouts, and uh, she's just a big part of the business. It truly wouldn't be the operation it is without her in it. Uh, from a family standpoint, I've had the opportunity to watch Les and Marsha, our partners, raise four sons in this ranch and uh, they're all involved in his ranch in one form or another and now they've got kids coming up and so to see multi-generation families uh, thrive in agriculture is, is really kind of nice. On the Linskoff Thiel Ranch in Isabel, South Dakota, two families have worked hard to develop a strong customer base to market their Charlay, Black Angus and commercial herds. Oh, we're pretty fortunate, I think, in this region. Our, our cattle economy is good, and uh, uh, so that's kind of the core of our business and our customers' business. Um, we're lucky in that most of our customers uh, derive their living from a cow-calf and some somewhat small grain. So genetics and bulls are a big, big part of their life, and so we try to be a big part of that. Another important goal on the operation, calf health. Brent says focusing on the long-term health of their herds has helped grow and maintain their reputation and customer base. And managing for respiratory health is one of the most important parts of their health program. Our cow-calf operation, uh, at branding time we give all of our calves um, Vista once and uh, Vision 7. And uh, then we booster that in September, or uh, 1st of September around Labor Day usually and then we booster it uh, the day we weaned, which is usually about the 10th of October. So by the time they're weaned, uh, hopefully we've done a good job and gotten them through about three rounds of vaccination. It's a program that's been developed in partnership with his local veterinarian. Dr. Tammy Winger Merriman says the old adage, an ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure, rings true, especially when it comes to managing respiratory diseases. My advice to producers when dealing with respiratory disease is prevention is always worth it. Uh, prevention is always better than treatment. Uh, when you hit the stage of needing treatment, lung damage is done, uh, morbidity is higher, mortality is higher, so dollars are well spent in prevention. Stay out with your cattle. Get, get, be out there. Be, I think, I think in my experience, you have to strike first and you have to uh, vaccinate, not only from a preventative standpoint, but when you see something sick, to me, if you wait a couple days or get busy haying or doing something else, you're behind the game and it's a lot harder to prevent scar tissue damage and those kinds of things as compared to being out there and knowing what's going on and staying on top of it. The positive working relationship between the Linskoff Thiel Ranch and Faith Veterinary Services is one Dr. Bill Burdett says is key to the success of any operation. And he says it's one he encourages as a technical services veterinarian. If you look at the Thiels and their ranching operation and their relationship with Dr. Winger, for example, they work very closely with her and vice versa. And those kinds of situations allow the uh, the operation to glean just as we were talking about uh, the, the the diagnostics in other words if they get on top of a problem or try to see ahead of any potential problems then they can maximize their health and production of their herd we in technical services provide additional support in that we can look at different possibilities for uh, products, but not only products, uh, actually working with diagnostic labs and, and being able to interact with, with people in the field 
whether they be animal scientists or veterinarians, in order to bring even more expertise to the table. And working with the right, quality products also makes a difference when it comes to proactively managing your herd's health. The Vista products work well in our practice because they are low dose, 2 cc's, they're sub-Q administration, which is very important because we um, adhere to BQA guidelines. Um, they are multivalent, which is very important, and they are economical. You know, in these times, we're trying to get the most we can for our money. And when you have great immunity with a good product that's easy on the cattle, that doesn't cost the ranch, well, that's important. Vista Once is a, uh, a seven-way respiratory prevention product, and it contains five viral antigens, the IBR, BBD type 1, BBD type 2, BRSV, and PI3, along with the Mannheimia pastorella combination, the Mannheimia hemolytica pastorella multocida. And all seven of those agents are extremely common as it relates to bovine respiratory disease. And what I really like about Vista Once is it's, uh, it's a smooth product, and so it's all live. And so the calf's immune system actually sees each of these seven organisms and is able to respond so that they get a complete immune response. I think that the interesting thing is about uh, 20 years ago, very typical to this region, as we got into late August, early September, we were having some down ears, a little coughing, typical signs of that. And uh, so we, we tried to be proactive and so we started a, a more rigorous vaccination program in the spring. And then uh, as we, we went past seven way and went into the IBR, BVD combination uh, respiratory shots, uh, we saw almost an immediate result. So we started using the Vista product and, uh, and I really like it and I think that's helped us. And it's a combination of a solid vaccination program and a strong nutritional program that leads to overall herd health no matter your location. In this area of South Dakota where, uh, where we're at today, Vista Once and Vision 7 Somnus are used uh, pretty commonly together. And uh, that really includes much of the northern United States because of the incidence of Histophilus somni which used to be called or Haemophilus somnus. These two particular vaccines are pretty stress-free. And many veterinarians, and I would encourage you to consult with your veterinarians because they are aware of what's going on in your area. They're aware of any problems that, that, that might in, uh, occur. But much of that combination of product has been used uh, in this area very successfully because they're relatively easy on cattle. That is one of my favorite uh points about the Vista line of vaccines is there are multiple combinations. You can tailor any program to an individual or producer because you have choices there. Um, one thing that the company has done very well is they have a complementary uh, seven-way somnus or Haemophilus somnus product that works very well with the Vista once. So you can get a lot of antigens in two shots, which definitely adhere to our BQA standards. Just like the health benefits Vista and Vision provide to cattlemen, Linskoff Thiel strives to provide quality products and services to their customers. I think probably the most important thing I've learned is uh, treat your customers the way you'd like to be treated. I, I have, have just a great customer base and uh, I think interaction with them treating them with a good product and good service and, and a good attitude. I think that's probably the most enjoyable part of it, that and raising cattle. Reporting from Isabel, South Dakota, I'm Brian Baxter for NCBA's Cattlemen to Cattlemen. There's details on both the Vista and Vision lines of vaccines online at cattlemen cattlemen.org. We'll be right back. Looking forward to having Vista once back. We weren't able to find an equivalent product. I think our practice will be very quick to adopt Vista when it comes back. All of my veterinary colleagues have all talked about the product coming back. We're glad to have Vista back in the product line. Cattlemen that we work with will be glad to have the product. We have a lot of producers. They're excited about it coming back. Yeah, can I recommend Vista once? Yeah, that's going to go right back in the cooler and uh, it goes right back in the cans. 
Ever wonder where the beef checkoff dollar goes and what it buys? The Federation of State Beef Councils is made up of the 45 qualified state beef councils that collect the $1 per head beef checkoff. Each council keeps control of 50 cents and sends 50 cents to the Cattlemen's Beef Board for use in national beef checkoff programs. Many states also choose to send a portion of their share to the Federation to expand national and international efforts. As a division of the National Cattlemen's Beef Association, the Federation of State Beef Councils works to support an effective state and national partnership, helping to increase beef demand through research, promotion, and education. Because producers themselves direct these programs, your beef checkoff dollars are in good hands. Learn more about the Federation of State Beef Councils by visiting beefusa.org. cost forage and improve grazing access by clearing out weeds and brush with these Dow AgroSciences herbicides. See your Dow AgroSciences representative or visit rangeandpasture.com. The average day for a cattleman is packed with a lot of hard work, feeding, checking cattle, and all the other tasks that must be done to keep a farm or ranch running smoothly. In addition, some choose to volunteer their time to help protect this way of life for the rest of us. Cattleman to Cattleman reporter Brian Baxter has more about one Wyoming cattleman who supports the beef industry in a variety of ways. Dave True's roots in the agriculture industry run deep in the mountains of Wyoming. My parents were always uh, enjoyed the out of doors in the mid 50s when they got involved with a small 35 cow, one bull operation up in the Laramie Mountains in southeastern Wyoming. It was, it was just an opportunity to become involved in, in the cattle business. Their cattle business has grown quite a bit over the last 50 years. Today they have seven cow-calf operations, two feedlots, and two farms, all concentrated in eastern Wyoming. The ranch that we're on right now is called the, the VR Ranch. The VR is, a, is a strictly a cow-calf operation. Cows that are here behind me are black baldies, as you can see. And obviously on top of those black baldies, we put charlet bulls to, to uh, end up with the, the three-way calves uh, that we have, the half Charlet, quarter Hereford, quarter Angus calves. Agriculture isn't the only area the True family is involved with. They also found a niche in the oil and gas industry. Our oil and gas company is called True Oil. Back in the late 40s, my dad had been working for a company called the Texas Company, which of course evolved into Texaco and he left the Texas company and started to run a two-rig uh, drilling company that was providing drilling services for other companies within the oil and gas industry. And from there it just uh, grew. While many people might think the ag and oil and gas industries couldn't be more different from each other, Dave says the basic concepts of both businesses are actually very similar. They're both natural resource-based industries. They're, they're an uh, industry that's, that's really founded on the, the prudent management and wise use of natural resources. Of course, the oil and gas is a, is a depletion kind of use of, of natural resource, but yet you still have to be a steward of that resource in order to maximize its longevity and its, its ultimate financial benefit to society. Not only does Dave split his time working at the office and on his ranches, he also holds a volunteer position as treasurer for the National Cattlemen's Beef Association. Being uh, one of the officers uh, has been very interesting. I've been able to be involved in some of the discussions at that level uh, and uh, I've gotten to know the 
the leadership team that we have, uh, not only the volunteer officer leadership team, but also the staff leadership team, and it's a great group of people. Dave says while it does take extra time, volunteering is an integral part of being a strong advocate for the beef industry, and it's a responsibility he takes very seriously. I know time is precious, time is limited. Uh, we all have the same 24 hours a day, and, and we all keep them very full. But there is a responsibility to serve your industry, to make it as good as you can, as well as maintaining your own operations. I've continued to feel that the industries in which we are involved have been very good to our family, and I want to be involved in an attempt to make them better and to even have those industries available for our children to go into if that's their choosing. Like many cattlemen across the United States, Dave believes that being an NCBA member helps keep the beef industry moving forward. I'm an NCBA member because I feel it's critical that we have producers actively involved with driving the policy of a national organization as well as providing a sound organization for checkoff purposes. In addition to the oil and gas industry, as well as the agriculture industry, the true name also has an interesting tie to the history books. It's actually my great uncle. Uh, his name was Alan Tupper True. He was a artist, a painter. He put murals in the Colorado State Capitol. He has murals in the Wyoming Capitol. He has murals in the Missouri Capitol. He is the artist who actually drew the Wyoming bucking horse that is always on our license plates. It's the symbol for the University of Wyoming. State government uses it. And quite honestly, it's probably one of the most readily identified state logos in the entire U.S. Dave says it doesn't matter who you are or where you come from. The reason cattlemen in all 50 states work so hard each and every day continues to remain the same. Whether we're standing up on a windy ridge in Wyoming or sitting in, in uh, belly deep grass down in, in Florida, we're all got the same goal. Ultimately, we are all driven to provide a healthy, nutritious, safe product for the consumer. Reporting from Eastern Wyoming, I'm Brian Baxter for NCBA's Cattlemen to Cattlemen. You know, I didn't think I could afford to vaccinate for scholars. Then my vet told me about Guardian vaccine. Guardian offers the most complete coverage of any scholars vaccine. And now Guardian can protect my calves against E. coli up to six months prior to calving. It pays to vaccinate with Guardian scholars vaccine. Thanks to Guardian, I have healthier calves and healthier profits. I am an NCBA member. I am an NCBA member. NCBA is my eyes and ears and most importantly my voice because I can't be on Capitol Hill all the time. But my membership through NCBA has people that are there that know what my concerns are and can inform me when those issues come up that are affecting my day-to-day -day operations and can take actions on those appropriately. I'm an NCBA member. I'm an NCBA member because I believe that this organization is determined to preserve the way of life that those of us growing up in the cattle industry have grown to love. I am an NCBA member. I am an NCBA member. I am an NCBA member. Join me today. At Cabela's Corporate Outfitters, our business is outfitting your business with everything from customized clothing and equipment to great incentives like gift cards and hunting or fishing trips. We carry more than 150,000 products, all backed by Cabela's world-famous commitment to quality and service, along with volume-based pricing for any size business or budget. You trust Cabela's with your outdoor experiences, so rely on Cabela's Corporate Outfitters to build your brand. Visit us today at cabelas.com slash B2B. Let's face it, you don't think a lot about your trailer hitch. You use it and forget it. We understand, but at B&W, 
we think about it. Short nights, the long hauls, never-ending chores, the unthinkable. We think about it all, so you don't have to. B&W. Trusted. So why do you care if your cattle are source and age verified? Better yet, do you think the housewife cares? Well, 70% of consumers surveyed want to know where their food comes from. So where do you start? With this little green ear tag. IMI Global, the seal of approval that stands behind the beef you produce. IMI is engaged in source and age verification from the cow man to the kitchen table. So if you're ready to start, just ask us. IamIGlobal.com Black and white, oil and water, bean sprout and beef steak, father and son. One of the most complicated relationships since Adam and Abel or Pancho V and his prodigal son, the Cisco Kid. Many rural families hope that their children will be interested in taking over the family farm or ranch. But for that to happen, there's got to be a lot of give and take. I can't believe he's so ungrateful. I raised him from a pup. He worked beside me night and day. We never did let up. He learned to drive a tractor, grease a windmill, pick up rock to stack loose hay and irrigate. Never watch the clock. Each summer he spent on the place beneath my watchful eye. And then I sent him off to college thinking they would sanctify all this learning I had given him. But when he got out, guess what? He must have slept through classes because he just flat came untaught. He's got all these new ideas about how to run the place. I've listened to his theories till I'm near a basket case. He subscribed to every magazine, leaves them by my bed with pages marked for me to read about how the cows are bred or how to increase profits, change rotations, and upgrade. Shoot, he beats me up each morning and has the coffee made. He quotes his old professors who I'm sure ain't touched a plow. He forgets that 20 years ago, I picked the kind of cow we should be raising, but he's so dang enthusiastic, and my imagination's lost what's left of its elastic. I like to think eventually we'll work this whole thing out and run this place together. Shoot, that's what farming's all about. And we might, if I can just survive these lengthy conversations and he don't lose his energy before I lose my patience. This is Baxter Black from out there. I am an NCBA member. I am an NCBA member. I'm an NCBA member because NCBA is our voice in Washington. I'm an NCBA member. I am an NCBA member because I feel it's important that we have uh, an association such as this in Washington, D.C. to support our cattlemen throughout the country. I am an NCBA member. Join me today. It's the official monthly publication of the National Cattlemen's Beef Association. The National Cattlemen is produced exclusively for NCBA members and includes coverage of the news and events affecting our industry. From Capitol Hill to the far side of cattle country, the National Cattlemen provides information NCBA members need. Every issue includes market analysis, feature stories, and practical management tips. Start receiving your copy of The National Cattleman. Call 866-USA-BEEF or go online to beefusa.org and join today. Head to Denver, Colorado and join cattlemen from across the country for the 2012 Cattle Industry Summer Conference. This is your chance to meet with industry leadership and fellow cattlemen on current trends and initiatives while also making valuable contacts. Registered attendees will also have access to hot topics at the Issues Forums. Join us for the 2012 Cattle Industry Summer Conference July 25th to the 28th in Denver, Colorado. Visit BeefUSA.org for more information. 
Hi there, I'm Dr. Dan Thompson from Doc Talk. Join me next week as we discuss breeding soundness exams in bulls and the importance they have on getting a calf crop on the ground. My guest will be Dr. Bob Larson, who's a professor at the College of Veterinary Medicine at Kansas State University. And we'll discuss why this exam is so important. We'll discuss what goes on during the exam and stress the age-related factors to the performance of bulls. So please join me on Doc Talk right here on RFD TV, and I'll see you down the road. In this week's Legacy Photos, a look at some hard-working NCBA staff on their own operations. Send us your legacy photos. Visit cattlemantocattlemen.org. Thanks for joining us for this week's edition of NCBA's Cattlemen to Cattlemen. We'll see you right back here next week on RFD TV.